Welcome to Business Talk here and Business Tech, South Africa's number one business news website. And I think it's fair to say that one of the biggest impacts of the pandemic was experienced in supply chain. Overnight, global supply chains broke as countries locked down and, uh, and, and we still have the impact that China's ongoing zero COVID approach is having on global supply chains. Locally, I thought uh, we saw quite a lot of innovation around um, uh, how we brought uh, um, onshoring back into supply chains and how we supporting more local businesses. But someone who really understands us better than most is uh, Bremer Pau, who's a uh, managing director for Africa at DHL Supply Chain. Bremer, great to have you on the show. And uh, as we're around this festive time of year, I'm sure for a company like DHL, you really are hoping that uh, consumer confidence has a nice little Santa Claus rally into year end. But firstly, tell us a little bit about uh, DHL supply chain in South Africa and how you fared given the disruption to the supply chain industry since COVID-19. Thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you for having me and uh, good afternoon to your listeners. Um, so DHL supply chain uh, is one of three business units of DHL in, in Africa, uh, being Express and Global Forwarding, the other two. Uh, so supply chain business, we operate uh, predominantly in the consumer and automotive industries, and we've recently, as uh, in 2019, branched out into the mining and engineering verticals. Over the last while, as you've said, um, you know, disruption has become the new norm, uh, which has pointed towards more resilient supply chains across various uh, facets within our industry. And uh, when you talk about resilient supply chains, it's basically um, having the biggest crisis you could imagine, stress testing your supply chain as a company to see where the weak links are and then to, as a management team, say, right, this is where we need to focus our attention. And I, I think if one looks at this as an opportunity, it really has been unprecedented in that regard to stress test your supply chains. But you mentioned this new pivot into mining. Why the focus on the mining sector and, and why hasn't this been a focus traditionally for DHL? So, so what we saw a couple of years ago, we, we, we spent some time within the mining industry in South Africa. We went out to Rustenburg and visit, visited some of the mining operations there. And what we saw is a, is a real unconnected uh, supply chain space where uh, you know the mining industry doesn't necessarily have access to the same level of granularity on data and processes and systems access to the same type of um, quality people as, um, say, for instance, compared to the consumer and our automotive industries in South Africa. So it's a real opportunity on um, standardization and then really bringing the industry up to the same level of um, uh, development as we've seen in other verticals. So a big opportunity there for the mining industry to catch up. And I often think here uh, of, you know, the mining industry being fairly conservative. Whenever I'm down in the mining in Daba, it's of deal makers, men in hard hats that, that that don't tend to take too much risk, especially when it comes to things like smart technology, automation. But over the last few years, it's been a big buzzword that I've heard. Increasingly, I'm hearing mining companies talk about data, digital twins of mining operations. Uh, what are you currently doing that excites you? Yeah, that's uh, uh, music to my ears. That uh, Actually, we, we're playing with a digital twin um, example, one of our uh, fast-moving consumer goods clients in South Africa, uh, which is hopefully going to be delivered next year. Uh, but back to the mining space, um, we are in the process of establishing a, a, a multi-client route to mine transportation network, uh, which is really aimed towards addressing three uh, main objectives. One being, you know, just the elimination of general waste and the obvious impact on reducing CO2 emissions in that space. Um, outside of that, the other two are you know, creating visibility on the route to mine, uh, which again points towards resilience. If you if you know the, the truck is arriving at the mine every Tuesday morning, it's much, much easier to plan um, and much easier to give a bit of assurance to the mining operators that have been historically, um, as you say, very much focused on, um, you know, pushing out more tons. Um, the third element is, is really targeted at uh, exposing some of the, the balance sheets um, that we see in the in the automotive, uh, that we see in the mining space, whereas creating more visibility will enable suppliers to, uh, to understand what stock is in which warehouse. Um, and ultimately, if, if you are a supplier to a mine today, chances are that, that you are delivering your own stock to the mine, uh, not knowing that there might be stock in a warehouse not 50 kilometers away, um, you know, if you are a supplier of a mine today, account management processes, I, I think, is, is a troublesome subject. Um, mm. Managing 
returns from mines is, is notoriously difficult. Yeah, absolutely. But I think if you're a mining company and also if you're a service provider into the mining industry, now is probably the time to be developing these kinds of solutions. Because the other hallmark for me, broadly speaking, when you survey the mining industry landscape is the capital discipline. We haven't seen a massive wave of, of M&A. So, you know, the capital is either sitting there on the balance sheet being returned to shareholders or it's being recycled and reinvested back into the business and what better way than to have a look at something like supply chain to ensure that you are building that resilience uh, and that future fit um, you know profitability into your supply chain into the future w where do you see the big opportunities and and broadly what does that mean for the industry look i, I think there's 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 two two separate uh investments that that i'm seeing is one is the investment in time um towards uh, sustainable solutions in the mining space. Uh, I, I think that uh, DHL offers solutions that uh, that can create the, the bandwidth within the mining companies to focus more time and attention on um, you know, uh, their roadmap towards uh, you know, carbon neutrality. Uh, and then the second element is freeing up the, you know, the actual money investments on balance sheets to, to create funds to again invest behind sustainability. I think the, the current ESCOM woes that, you've, uh, that you mentioned earlier on is is really making investments in in power systems and reservoir backup power power systems uh, much more lucrative. Uh, with with currently we're seeing paybacks of less than less than six years on um, you know large investments within that space. Mm, and and equally, you know, there, there are lots of challenges as we know all across the economy. But where there's a challenge, again, there's an opportunity. So if you look at some of the challenges, what what are the challenges that excite you? Uh, for your customers in the sector that DHL can help overcome? Uh, so, Michael, uh, one of the, the biggest ones, probably the most obvious, is uh, sharing of, of knowledge and information on the subject of, of sustainability. Um, as, as DHL supply chain, we've uh, we've got, like most other companies, uh, quite ambitious goals in, in, in this area. Uh, we are targeting to be carbon neutral from a warehouse facility uh, management perspective uh, by 2025. Uh, uh, you know, in saying that, in in Africa we are, we we manage uh, roughly a million square meters of of, of warehouse space, and uh, so there there therein lies a big opportunity to one make a massive impact in Africa, but also help some of our clients that have similar goals to get there. Now, what does that mean in practical terms? Because not only do you have massive warehouse space, I'm sure you can uh, retrofit that using solar, maybe use rainwater harvesting as well. But in terms of transport, uh, are you thinking about hydrogen powered trucks, electric trucks? What does that mean in practice? Yeah, so uh, I'm glad you picked up on that. So, so transport is a, is a separate objective uh, to reduce our impact by 50% as measured in 2020. Uh, so in the transport space, it's not as straightforward. Our, our African challenges are, are, you know, got a different flavor to that of our international or European colleagues. Uh, you know, electric vehicles in South Africa is, is not readily available. You preferably want to find a, the fuel solution in South Africa. But if you look at uh, new Euro 5 emissions technology being launched by many of the OEMs in South Africa, uh, just by by investing in new fleet as the HL supply chain will do in the next 18 months, you can reduce your impact by about uh, 40%. Um, you know, so wow. to put that in numbers uh, today, on a on an average, uh, you know, say uh, interlink vehicle that's say about four years old, your carbon impact per kilometer is 1.5 kgs, uh, which is quite a big number. By investing in new technology, uh, that automatically reduces by by forty percent. Obviously, assuming that your drivers continue to drive as our drivers do, responsibly. Yeah, well, I mean, it just shows you how quickly things are evolving in this space, but also the fact that because you you have presence in the automotive and the consumer sectors, you can use some of that best practice and that expertise. So how are you working that in to transform mining, the, the learnings that you've got from autos and consumers? So uh, DHL supply chain uh, started with a heavy standardization journey about 10 years ago, um, which has led us to today where all of our processes and systems are standardized across sector almost to a point where we don't really differentiate cross-sector anymore from operations management and you know, execution perspective. So scaling is, is quite easy, and we've done so successfully uh, into the mining industry a couple of years ago uh, 
onboarding some uh, engineering suppliers to, to most of the mines in South Africa. Um, more towards the, the, the mining houses, we believe that from a planning and orchestration and execution perspective, common systems will, will already add a, add a, a, a massive amount of value in, in their lives. Um, and visibility at the end of the day, I think, drives decision-making, which I suspect you know, some of our mining companies in Africa don't really have access mm. to data as, as others do. Um, the other benefit that, that we bring as DHL supply chain is, is world-class uh, people processes and, and a culture that's you know, um, uh, very deeply ingrained within our business. Uh, so taking over or taking on uh, mining supply chain and, and facilities also gives access to, to the standard uh, people's practices, to their staff and opportunities to grow within the industry. Um, you know, if you think about uh, this, the standard mining company in South Africa, they specialize in developing talent that that uh, extracts more ore from the ground, whereas our capability or our key competencies uh, developing talent that um, you know grows within the logistics industry and space. Yeah, and it's tough. It's a tough uh, space, the logistics industry. I was interviewing the the CEO of uh, Barlow World recently, and they had to exit. He said, Dominic Sawilla said to me, he said, you know, we just had to realize where our core cool competency lies. And it wasn't in that space, Michael. So we had to take the tough decision and we had to exit that business. So it just shows you. Uh, you mentioned what miners are all about. It's quite simple. At the, at the end of the day, it's tons to the mill. What would you say is your key ingredient that sets DHL apart from competitors in, in the mining industry? Uh, Michael, I, I think many multinationals might, might say the same, but, but I truly believe that being part of a, a, a international supply chain solutions business, as DHL supply chain, we are present in, in uh, over 50 countries in the world and we've got uh, chances are that, that somebody within the DHL network has dealt with the with problem uh, that, that you might be experiencing today. And we've got access to all of that uh, knowledge and expertise. You know, as, as we say, we, we do pop with pride because we try to be standard as possible. Um, so that's the first thing. And then uh, second to that, our, our rich history and our, our culture of innovation and improvement. Uh, you know, uh, we go by every day a little bit better uh, every single day. Yeah, and it's that incremental improvement every day that leads to big uh, exponential leaps forward, ultimately. What's your goal in, in all of this? Have you set yourself a goal as you as you enter the mining value chain? So as I mentioned earlier on, uh, at, at the moment, we are we are launching this, uh, this mining uh, transport network. Uh, that's step one for us in, in, in terms of getting the, the value add back to the mining houses. Uh, following that, our next step would be to, to set up centralized distribution centers for mines, similar to what you see in, in the retail space today. And ultimately, that's where the, where the value will lie. Um, uh, and obviously, growth outside of South Africa, uh, perhaps one day uh, setting up some regional warehouses, uh, you know, somewhere like in, in Zambia or in, in the DRC even. But that's Very exciting. That's very well. You have to have a big, hairy, audacious goal, as they say, and uh, that really is looking to fundamentally alter the way that uh, I think mining supply chain has been done in Africa up to now. So, uh, very interesting chatting to you, Brema Po, managing director for Africa at DHL Supply Chain. Thanks so much for sharing your goals and uh, aspirations as you enter the mining sector here on Business Talk. Take care.